Neil Welch. I'm Head of Rehab here at the Sports Surgery Clinic in Santry. Uh, we know it's a tough time at the minute and we know there are many of you still having to deal with aches and pains throughout the body and, and don't have access to, to physiotherapy for, for assistance. So we've put together this brief series of videos for you to, to give you an overview of a lot of those conditions you might be dealing with and some rehab exercises you might try at home to, to get you going along the way. Uh, we hope it's of, of use. Uh, give the exercises a go uh, and, and, and see if it can give you some improvement in your condition. Hello, my name is Dr. Jim Rambuk. I'm a consultant in sports and exercise medicine here at the Sports Surgery Clinic in Santry. Today I'm going to talk to you about tennis elbow, which is pain on the outer aspect of the elbow. It commonly affects people usually between the age of 30 to about 60 and um, use their arms a lot for certain activities and it can present in two instances. One with a sudden increase in manual activity such as using a screwdriver or block lane or more commonly gradually over time when someone is using a keyboard um, or repeated activities that require you to grip or you bring your wrist into extension. So if we now take a 3D anatomical look at the lateral elbow, we can see that the main muscle group that affects this condition is the extensor tendon compartment. The extensor tendons run from the outside of the upper arm, the humerus bone, from a bony prominence called the lateral epicondyle, and run down the forearm uh, to the wrist and are very important in wrist extension exercises which is where the wrist moves upwards or uh, backwards. It is also, um, they also are crucial in stabilizing the wrist when performing certain activities and that's often why people get the pain when they're doing simple day-to-day -day activities such as brushing their teeth or holding a cup of tea and this can commonly come on when using a keyboard. To help our diagnosis, we would often use imaging here in the Sports Surgery Clinic Sanctuary with MRI, for example, to look closely at the um, tendon. Um, we look for evidence of tendinopathy or if there's any evidence of partial tearing uh, within the, the tendon as well, as this may affect prognosis. What's important when considering a diagnosis of this condition is to also look for other possible causes and referred pain from above the elbow, such as pain from the shoulder, or indeed referred pain from the trapped nerve of the neck can present similarly, um, as well as some more localized nerve entrapment conditions that are similar in presentation to a tennis elbow. We take a multimodal approach to managing this condition. What underpins our management is a strengthening uh, program. My colleague is going to follow um, my talk here with the key principles of a graduated return to loading of the tendon. In some cases where the uh, healing of the condition is slow, we may consider some other adjuncts. Traditionally, corticosteroid injections were used a lot, but recent evidence has shown that we are best to keep away from these um, if possible. They are potentially iatrogenic to the tendon and can slow recovery. Here at Sports Surgery Clinic Sanctuary, we will use um, non-invasive uh, technologies such as shockwave therapy, which uh, plays an important role in reducing the levels of pain and also can there is some evidence to show that it stimulates the tendon to heal uh, and we've had some good results with this and also um, if there's evidence of partial tearing within the tendon we will also consider doing platelet-rich plasma injections to try and further stimulate uh, tissue regeneration. Hi, so today I'm going to cover some exercises that you can commence if you think you are suffering from tennis elbow. The aim of these exercises is to increase the muscle capacity around the elbow and in particular the wrist extensors uh, to eventually allow you gradually return back to the activities and uh, sports that you wish to pain free. So first up we have Neil doing a wrist extension hold. So you can see here that the arm is fully supported on the bench. You can either use a bench or a table. And the only part that is moving is the wrist, which comes up into that extended position, and he's holding the weight. Um, 
So the key points here are bringing the wrist into the uh, slightly extended position and ensure the four, forearm muscles are working. Uh, generally start with a one or two kg weight and you can, can progress from there and start with a 20 or 30 second hold which can often feel very fatiguing um, and build up over time to a 45 60 second hold with the aim of working towards five to six repetitions. Uh, following on from that you can also try a banded wrist supinator exercise Again, the setup is very similar where the forearm is fully supported. We start with the wrist in that neutral position and then you can see Neil fully rotating the wrist right over against the resistance of the band and back into neutral. So the key points here, rotate the wrist as far as you can and keep the rest of the arm still. Uh, generally use some uh, decent heavy resistance band um, and monitor that 12 to 24 hour response after exercise. If it's comfortable the next day, then you know that it's tolerating the exercise well. And just to conclude, uh, some key points to remember when you're rehabilitating a tennis elbow is consistency with exercise. Um, and tennis elbow often takes a period of time like any tendon to change, uh, bearing in mind love to take months rather than weeks, but generally has a good response and most generally do well.